Twitch chat Wardog message over. Welcome back guys to day 12 of our Let's Roleplay Jung Jung campaign. Let me get you guys a live scene here. I'm going to have to change that because that's not the Total War layout. There we go. Alright. Let's get kicked off here with a quick recap. So on day 11, we uh, finished up our war against the Duchy of Song. Their name is down here because they own this one, but most of their territory is here. Uh, they used to have territory over this side of the river, and on day 11 we kicked them across the river and made them our tributary. We did start that session at war with Ma Zun and Lang Juan Yan. That's, those wars are still going on, but now we've added Han Xin to the mix, or rather Han Xin has added himself to the mix. So our western front, and the pretty much the entire northwest of China, minus the yellow turbans, is our new war front so we've got all armies rushing to the west to attempt to try and defeat these guys preferably before somebody else jumps on us i think Imotech, that it's just me and you for the time being i know that david is working so he's not going to make the stream at all i know that cal is working so he's not going to make the stream at all and i know that ryan is still coming back from football so he probably will make the stream but he won't be here at the start as for everybody else oh sarah's here as well there we go, so we've got Song Jian in here too, so there is two sponsored officers in here right now. We are of course playing with sponsor and officer in effect, guys. I'm not going to bother with the spiel because everybody in the chat right now knows what it is anyway. So we're just going to have a quick recap of who's where. Han An Yue, along with Jing Pei, is over here at Chang'an. Jiang Wan is on the Yellow River and heading north, last he said. Zhong Zhang is arriving at Luoyang Trade Port to try and take that from Han Xin. Song Chen is rushing through the mountains to try and assist against Han Xin's invasion at Shi He, which is where Lu Zhong is backing up Wang Yi, which is, of course, Doomsday's new sponsored officer as of Day 11, who has raised his retinue in defense of Shi He, along with the, the faction heir Lu Zhong. We're still holding on to promotions, three promotions for Ju Jun, which is Tyler's character, but Tyler's not here, so we're going to keep holding on to them. Uh, this says Yin Li is a court noble. Uh, he should be considered Grand Excellency, but uh, I don't know what that's about. Which we did at the end of last stream, we appointed Yin Li to the Grand Excellency position, which of course is the position which oversees construction for the entire faction, so hopefully we'll get some construction on the go managed by an NPC at this time. Uh, we're actually going to... No, we'll not. We'll just end the turn and kick things off, guys. Let's get rolling. Could we maybe try to coax Han Xin to attack Ma Zun and then shank him in the back? Could we not leave one army behind just in case any East faction declares war? I think the plan was to leave an army behind Imotech, but the uh, army that we were leaving behind was Tsong Chen, and David has since given me orders that he wants Tsong Chen to head west, so... I, I'm not going to have him turn around, because I know his intention is to go west. She, her is under siege, so let me have a look at this for a second. It's predicting a valiant defeat if we go at it. We would have two full retinues from the garrison and then two very weak retinues from the forces that are arrayed inside. If we sallied out, it would be a field battle. Um doesn't tell me how long we've got until we run out of supplies, which is not helpful. It does when you're attacking, but apparently when you're defending the game neglects to mention how long you've got. Change this turn is minus 20. Capital of this commander, he can hold out for in a siege for six turns. Yes, but how long do the supplies last? Because that's not as long as it can hold out. It's 
doesn't seem to want to tell me. Uh, interesting. Five Do turns before away. capture. Did you Wait, see that somewhere or? Yeah. I'm not seeing any indication of when we start taking attrition. That is for when we have to, when the city basically gives up. So I think for at least one turn we'll try and have people head to the rescue. So I know that Jiang Wan wanted to head north, so we'll have Jiang Wan continue heading north. Han on you, uh, yeah, three or four turns. It might be two or three, to be honest, but uh, certainly should get at least one. Um, I actually think it's when the reserves are depleted, and it has nine reserves right now, so it may be one turn, and then it will start to take attrition. Um, you know what? If you attacked him, the garrison would assist Han on you, uh, so, I think Han An Yue and Lu Wei Huang here are going to have it, have it out. Yeah, he doesn't want to fight her with the garrison behind her. Ah, shit. Uh, we'll push. It is just a Pyrrhic victory, which is not ideal, but we're going to delegate it anyway. That will get rid of his army. Oh, and she's acquired a wooden dog. Excellent. And Han Anyue has leveled up. 55-year-old legendary sentinel with a trader background. She's direct, uncomplicated, honest, intrepid, trusting, philanthropic, and fulfilled. Hmm. I feel like direct, uncomplicated, honest, and intrepid kind of add up to bravery, so we'll give her the bravery skill. And then there is another army yeah, under Guo Tu in Hanjong. We can just about reach Chang An, so we are going to push her back out the other side in forced march. Meanwhile, the bandit queen herself shall take Wu Yang trade port. And we're just going to delegate because it's a decisive victory. Is it only five more years before retirement? For Han An Yue, if she was 55, which I think she was, then yes. I retire generals at 60, typically, unless they are player-sponsored, and then it's kind of more optional. Uh, we are going to occupy. And... Yeah, we know about that. Jing Pei, you are now rivals with the lieutenant in your army, Chiao Zhou. We gained a wooden dog and a family spear. I know we got the wooden dog from Han An Yue's uh, victory, so she's just going to gift to that to Zhao Jo. And the family spear, I don't believe, can be used by sentinels, and I know it can't be used by strategists. So I'm going to say that Zhong Jiang's army was the one that won that. I don't. She's only got sentinels as well, to be fair. Hmm. She is 55. Yeah, she's probably got about five years then. Um. I guess it just goes in the pool then. Right. Uh, the other one we need to do is Song Qian. Who is attempting to make his way 
to the west. And we're also going to have Yin Li begin his work as the Grand Excellency. We have got a lot of problems. Um, Herney's got some public order issues. It can't get more building slots than it already has. And it makes most of its income from peasantry. Well, we certainly don't need a building that improves population growth. And it adds income percentage, which we don't really need to industry. So I think Yin Li is going to begin by ordering the demolition of the permanent labour housing. Guess it's not that permanent. In Herne. Um Craftsman workshop, income from commerce and industry, percentage, which we barely make any money on. Mm. We'll see. Alright, and we'll try and fix something in Ping Yuan. Makes most of its money, well, practically all of its money comes from industry and its ancillary um, settlement also does industry, so we want to be supporting that really. Which means the permanent labour housing, we are going to switch over to a Bureau of Mining Subsidiaries. Yanmen is a pretty even split. It's got some public order problems going on as well due to population so we'll upgrade it to a large city hopefully that will deal with those yo Joe makes almost all of its money from industry it's pretty stable right now so we're going to leave it as it is Chang'an is on the front lines so I don't really want to touch it Yao Xi and this will be the last one we'll do for this turn I think makes almost all of its money from industry which means this merchant registry office is completely useless because we don't make any money from commerce here so that's getting demolished right um, probably champions and vanguard yeah for spears it is Zimotek. Uh, can admin say a big F off to the orders of Ex excellency um, I'm, we'll certainly say that if you're in your settlement you can but again don't forget that we do it kind of like the message actually gets sent so if the Grand Excellency who we assume is at the capital sends an order to Xi He to build something and Jinpei is in Chang'an in this army then no he can't say no because there's no, he's not there if you're in the city and the messenger arrives you can certainly say no and we'll see where that goes in terms of you versus the Grand Excellency. But yes, you can if you're able to stop the message. We'll push on into uh, harvest season though. Hopefully we don't lose she her on this turn. Oh, poo. Well, they're almost definitely going to fight next turn. Alright, we've gained a wooden fish ancillary. Ping Yuan has converted its Bureau of Mining subsidiaries. And that already means it makes more money than her day. It doesn't make any money from commerce, and I don't particularly think although it, it's got massive public order problems right now as well I don't particularly think that this building is very useful we are going to have it ordered to be instantly demolished and 
instantly replaced by a Confucian shrine, which will stabilize the public order. Okay, hold up. Where is Ping Yuan? Its adjacent commanderies are Herne, Yu, An Ping, and Bohai. Their corruption levels pretty flipping high. So, in truth, it's probably worth lowering those by 10%. Although, what's their income actually like? No, none of them make a huge amount of income, so maybe not. Maybe we just push it up to Grand State Workshops. Uh, what else did we build? Permanent labour housing in her name, which is still having public order problems. So, again, we're going to get some Confucian temples. And we're going to bin build them instantly. Stabilizes her name's public order. Right. We will get a grand trading port there. And we'll leave it there for the building this turn. Han An Yue needs to replenish her forces. The Bandit Queen is going to proceed west towards Chang'an to assist. Although our front is actually a lot wider than that because we've got these settlements this way. But that's fine. Uh, Tsong Chen is just going to continue sprinting west. Oh, what have we got going on here? A box of tactical marines is a great solid core of space marines. Where is me and my waifu? You are down here on your way to assisting Han on you were at Chang'an. That is a lot of 40k information, Himatek. I am skimming it, but I'm just not going to read it out loud. Um, oh, Jiang Wan is actually leveled up, so Ryan's got a level up when he turns up. Okay, what's his traits? Honest, concerned, philanthropic, handsome, dutiful, and arrogant. None of those say that he's particularly incompetent, and none of them say that he's particularly overcautious. So I think we're going to force march him up to the city, because it's the only way to get him there this turn. And then the city, I guess, is going to sally out. It would be a Pyrrhic victory if we auto-resolved. damage quite a lot in AP he's pretty bad he's average and Jung does a lot of base Wang Yi not so much Jung Wan not so much Tao Jin Ji not so much particularly auto resolve cheese we still win it I think probably that's what we're gonna do Imotech um I think we'd win the fight on the battlefield, but we'd risk losing Tao Jin Jin because she's not legendary. These guys would have a hard time holding on. Yeah, if since you're you're the main, like you're the only person that's particularly active in the chat right now, Imitech, if you say cheese it, we'll cheese it. We'll grab a delegate win. <laughs> Sounds 
gained three infamy. We've captured Chun Jun, the 30 year old administrator of Wu Wei. He's kind hearted, feared, and relentless. Interesting. We've also captured a second person, which is Bing Pei Yu. She's 49 and wouldn't join us even if we wanted her to. So I feel like she gets released for sure. His ancillary is a wooden dog. So it's really not worth killing him to get. Not that I would kill anyone to just get their ancillaries anyway. But I'm considering recruiting him. I think we're going to recruit Chunjun. I like to deprive the enemies of their officers, especially when they're at an age that's not particularly old and therefore might be useful to us, because they're also guaranteed to be not a spy. So we are going to employ him. We'll snatch some replenishment. A duel! The battle won. Our general chases down the enemy general and challenges them to a duel. Everyone watches, rapt, as the two leaders clash, each giving good account of their abilities. After an impressive bout that will be talked about for years, our general stands victorious. And Han Xin has been wounded, so we wounded the enemy faction leader in a duel. I don't know which character did it, but Tao Jin Jin has also leveled up. So, she is a 34-year-old legendary sentinel. Oh, she is legendary. Made it look like she wasn't. Uh, of a guard background, she's creative, stalwart, tolerant, trusting, trustworthy, and dutiful. I certainly think Barry Avery is in her remit. Yeah, boy. He also has a nice name. What, the one that we would just recruited? Chunjun. Chunjun. All right. That's all of the movement that we can do, I think. Let's just have a... Well, we already did the building before we did the fighting, so we will move on to the autumn, I think. Taking a long time. Han Xin will pay us a total of 10,780 uh, copper for peace. But I'm not particularly bothered. I don't feel like we're losing these three wars, and to be honest, they're great opportunities to grab land, so the Bandit Queen is just going to straight up refuse. I think everybody would straight up refuse, to be honest. Ascetic versus Greedy. Whilst at a lavish feast, an argument erupts between two of your followers. One decries the other's frugality, gesturing to the vast food on offer and imploring him to eat more. Yeah, him, because the right way around. The other suggests that gluttony speaks to a mind in chaos. The two seem quite intractable. Oh no. Yeah, it would have been. Imploring the other to eat more. The male one is the one that isn't greedy. But we're going to side with Cao Jie because Jung Jong is greedy. The feast was lavish. You insisted that your comrade enjoy the bounties. Song Jian Zera has gained the honest trait. So he's now creative, fiery, honest, fraternal, trustworthy and vengeful. He's becoming quite the, the boo. So Ying Mung is on her way back from assignment. We've gained a wooden ox. Oh, Ji Bun's back in the recruitment pool, apparently. Right, Han An Yue is still replenishing. Uh, Chung Zhang is going to arrive in Chang'an. Song Chen. We'll continue to move west. Oh, oh, oh. 
Cheong Wan doesn't have a lot of troops left, but then neither does Pan Chu. I'm fairly sure that Ryan would probably tell me to attack him, and he is. He's a bit arrogant, so maybe he's not as bothered about the the loss of a couple of men. But he's also dutiful, and he knows that this needs to happen, so. There's only 73 of them. Attack them in the middle of the night. Huang Chuan. Huang Chuan was the ascetic one. Grab that for punishment. Oh! Tao Jinjin and Pan Xu are now rivals. She's also rivals with Fu Yi. As is Jiang Wan. Rivals with both of them. I feel like Jiang Wan's got quite a few rivals, to be honest. Jing Pei. Zhong Zhang, Pan Xu, and Fu Yi. He's got four rivals. This dude does not make friends. Alright. Uh, I think for the time being, we'll keep Wang Yi and Lu Zhong raised in Xi He. At least until Tsong Chen arrives. We didn't get any building done. Uh, Yo Jo over here is doing fine. Chang An is doing fine. He Dong. We're just gonna upgrade. Oh, hello. Alright, um, we can't upgrade to a copper mining town because we actually need a certain tech. Or a certain reform, rather. Which is way up there at the top. But I think we'd be better off with 4% less corruption faction-wide, to be honest, anyway. For the sacrifice of 50 extra flat income. It's going to add up to more than 50 flat income, so we'll upgrade it to a copper coin mint. Bohai should potentially be food based hmm. Jung Won is rivals with Jung Jung yes he is because she uh, because she quote unquote released a rival of his which was a a Song general that we captured about five times, and Jiang Wan was there most of the time, which meant he's rivals with her because they were in a battle together. And then when we released her again, he held the faction leader accountable and didn't like it, so. I think. Where do we make no money? Yobei Ping is still not paying tax. If we unexempt it, it should be fine, and it actually makes us a stack load of cash. Uh, Shangdang makes the least amount of cash. Probably in part because there is a training camp here. Which I think Yin Li is going to order to be demolished. And we'll find something more appropriate for it. An Ping also makes very little money and has a spare slot. It should be backing peasantry and food based on its ancillary building. Although to be fair, with Jung Zhang's faction, places that have farms and stuff, it might be worth us building bandit places. It reduces the income for the commandery, but it won't make a lot of money anyway. So I think we're actually going to get a bit creative and build a makeshift bandit shelter in Hanping for the faction-wide replenishment. She, her, 
we'll repair that. Yeah, Dong Bai Imotech, that was the one. Is there Chun Jun in this? If so, can we appoint the Chun guy to admin of the place? Administrator Chun Jun of Chun Jun? Are you just trying to fuck with me, Imotech? going to be enough building for the autumn I think we shall proceed to the winter to the winter to the walls <laughs> till the blood washes down the halls yeah you thought I was going to do the thing I didn't do the thing Wu signed a peace treaty with Long Juan Yan. Ma Zun requested the Duchy of Song join their war against the Han. So now we're at war with Song. Imotech, you remember how you were saying about keeping an army in the east in case we get attacked? And I said, we were. It was David and he's decided to run over to the west. It turns out you were correct. So now we've got a problem. Who have we got kicking around? Have we got any administrators in this kind of area? Not really. Song Yang is 54. I want to request the building of a commerce in Shihe. Don't know if there's a, a commerce you can build, but we'll have a look. So Shihe can build from the sort of commercial learning and market buildings it can actually build in the in chain the school chain or the marketplace chain the in chain is flat commerce with a percentage boost uh, and later on you can vary which ones which the schools is faction wide character experience the marketplace is mostly a percentage boost to commerce and a trade percentage boost which in some chain branches can develop some kind of income the inn okie do so Jing Pei who is down here is going to issue orders we'll say they go up the river because it makes a lot more sense wow there's a lot of carts there holy crap they're going to arrive up here I don't feel Wang Yi or Lu Jung would have any reason to prevent them. No, they wouldn't. So we shall build a horse exchange in Xihe by order of Jing Pei. Um, right. The Bandit Queen sure as hell isn't going to turn around and go all the way back east, so we can move her without needing to really worry about things. She's going to attack Guo 2. And she's going to win. Again, not how those axes work, but that's fine. Oh, we captured Su Shu Juan. She's 44. Composed, stalwart, selfless, creative, philanthropic, and maimed. If she wasn't maimed, I'd be like all for that. She's like a proper hero. Don't question it. Question what? Oh, the axes. <laughs> Imotech saying employ. She's certainly a decent candidate for employment. The maimed is a little bit of a downer. And a rage as well. Like, again, without maimed at her age, she'd be reasonable to take on. Although we are kind of rolling in the cash. And she's pretty good. So if we recruit her, it means she's not working for the enemy. She's almost too perfect for us. We're going to employ her. We also captured Luo Jin Li, who is 29. She's handsome, gracious, and energetic. Fuck yeah. What do we reckon, guys? 
to Luo Jin Li. Unemployed. Sarah's saying go on then employ. Imatech, what do you mean unemployed? Like like killer or what <laughs> what? I think we want her. I mean at twenty nine she's young enough for it to be like unemployed them from the enemy. Ah, I see what you're doing there. Yeah, I think at twenty nine she's worth grabbing anyway. Uh, we will take a recruitment. Oh, I just got an achievement. Playing as any faction, progress a character to the maximum rank, simply the best. I think Jung Jung just leveled up. She did. The first time I've ever had a character reach rank or level 10. Stubborn, fiery, fraternal, greedy, energetic, clever, determined and one-eyed. She's either going to have mobility, poison blade or trust. Sure as hell don't feel like she's and to be fair all of these apply fraternal and stuff fraternal and well mainly fraternal lends itself towards trust she's definitely mobile she never stops she's energetic and her character is super destroy everything but poison blade is like pretty much her special thing isn't it Imotech saying ability Do you mean Poison Blade because it gives an ability, or are you mistyping mobility? I'm not sure. I actually don't know which of the three to pick, because they all apply. I kind of want to do Poison Blade just because it's pretty powerful, and I think it's unique to her. You guys though both think Poison Blade as well. Okay, we'll get Poison Blade for her. Jung Jung is level 10 at 56. Song Chen and Yao Zhou have become friends. And Yuan Shu and Yao Zhou have become friends. Yao Zhou making friends all over his new army. An Ping has completed its makeshift shelter. Uh, how much food does it produce? A lot. So we definitely want to increase its food production percentage so we'll get farm tool distribution Tai Yuan has completed its grand state workshops uh, we're gonna boost it sir uh, it's grain silos up to grain depots just to increase the reserve capacity and public order in case it gets sieged it means it will hold out for longer and we've completed the demolition of the training camp at Shangdang which should be focusing on its food so we'll get a drifter farming camp in there Are you telling me about the low public order? Oh, okay. I know. It's fine. I know. How long until you one turn? That's on the front line, so I don't want to touch it. Right. We've not got a tribute hall yet, have we? We have. We've got one tribute hall, which I think is in Zhongshan. Yeah, we've got a tributary court in Zhongshan. Um, apparently the bandit queen crossing that little stream has really messed with her movement. So I guess we'll put her into forced march so we can get her back across the other side of it. Have we got any babs? We haven't got any babies in terms of Jung Jung and Song Jian having them. I don't think we're gonna get any either because Jung Jung is 56. And I don't quite know how 
like baby production in the game works but i feel like female characters at least have like a like um they have they have the clock like i don't know when it starts to take effect but i think 56 is probably it's probably in effect maybe we should adopt i looked at um them adopting jiang wan but because jung jong and jiang wan didn't harmonize this was pre them being rivals too like um it i didn't go through with it but if you want to look for characters because your song jen so if you want to try and find a character that we can adopt then feel free we could ask yin lee to raise their retinue in the east they do have a clock imatech okay yeah well we're gonna look at it um because i think that's the big decision for this turn is what do we do david made clear to me before the stream that he wants tong chen to keep going west personally i thought it was a mistake when he started going west in the first place in the last stream but he, he that was the only thing he told me before the stream was keep tong chen going west so i kind of don't want to have him turn all the way back around with with ryan not being here i don't know whether ryan ryan would probably have jong one rush to the east but i don't have instructions from ryan so we could do that but i think more likely we will have somebody raise some troops in the east um and i feel kind of like Let's check Jujun's traits. Creative, impeccable, greedy, arrogant, and feared. Yeah, as much as Tyler's not here. Uh, but Tyler's not here. Yeah, I don't... No. I can still make decisions for him if I want. But I'm not gonna, because he's not here. Um, Who else have we got? Right. Song Yang. Uncomplicated, honest, distinguished temperamental and tolerant i think song yang because he's already raised his retinue previously in an unofficial army is going to raise a retinue in pinyuan Sao i mean we'll see I'm going to have a look at whose sort of traits match up. Tell you who definitely does match up would be Juga Kurt, because he is defiant. So we had him join Shun Yu's unofficial force in the last stream. I don't see why he wouldn't use the same logic and join Song Yang. So we just need a third. Wenhui is 50 years old, solitary, relentless. Not sure that he quite adds upright. Stubborn, honest, charismatic, and relentless. Could be Tsai Ying Meng. Huang Chuan is indecisive, but, so we're definitely not going to have him do it. Tishu Yu is ascetic, philanthropic, charitable, and vengeful. I don't think she's particularly there. Stalwart, greedy, and brilliant. Maybe, maybe not. Juju, suspicious, honourable, cunning, and scarred. Again, I'm not. I'm looking for traits that kind of show that they, they would. Could be Danwe. Juga Kerr is almost definitely in because he's defiant, so he doesn't care whether it's an official army or not. He's cowardly, so he's not. Nobody's got like dutiful or anything like that Tyler's arrived good lord hello Tyler wait not oh. <laughs> Welcome, welcome to the stream, Tyler. 
New Warhammer 2 Bretonian Lord is going to be lit. Cool. All right, Tyler, welcome back to the stream. Jujun has three points for promotion waiting. He's 57 years old. He's level seven and is the administrator of Zhongshan. So a lot has happened since the last time you were in stream. Dewan, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub, buddy. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Wolfpack. That's all right, Tyler. You can still pick it up now. You still have a sponsored officer. So would you like to start with your three skill points? Jujun is a 57-year-old level 7 legendary vanguard with an inspector bank background. He's the administrator of Zhongshan. He's creative, impeccable, greedy, arrogant, and feared. And for your first point, you have the choice of mobility, final rush, or flexibility. Wolfpack is a season stream. <laughs> kind of feel like the rush one would fit best. Okie do. That's fine. You still have two points left. So still with mobility and flexibility available. You now also have the choice of... Which I think you might have had in the first place. Guile. But now passion as well. Wolfpack is this Sean stream. Oh, okay. I see what you were saying now, Dylan. In English, man, and I might understand what you're on about. Passion for show. So for your third point, still with mobility, guile, and flexibility as options, you also have the option of clarity as well now. Well, he's got creative, so uh, what's Guile give? It gives plus 8 cunning. It enables guerrilla deployment for your retinue and 25% chance of ambushing for your army, whether you're the commander or not. Hell yeah, sign me up. All right, we'll go for Guile as well. So final rush, passion and Guile. Jujun has turned Super Saiyan, essentially. Um, the situation we've got at the minute, Tyler, is we're at war in the west with Han Xin, Ma Zun, and Lang Juan Yan. Uh, but they just called the Duchy of Song into the war, who are over here in the east. And all of our armies rushed to the west to participate in that war. Jujun was actually still in an army until last, I think last episode, when he was forcibly retired by Tsong Chen from being a captain at 50 odd years old. So you're currently over here in your set, your um, commandery of Zhongshan. But we are currently looking for officers to attempt to raise forces to fight Tsong in the east, if you wish. Fifty-seven is still a spry young man. I mean, apparently, according to some of the people that we've got running around in this faction, it absolutely is. Let me at him. Okay, so the administrator of Zhongshan, Zhu Jun, is also going to raise his retinue with Song Yang. And I'm actually going to say that Zhu Jun outranks Song Yang because of his administratorship, so it's going to be Zhu Jun's army. And then we already had a volunteer lieutenant in Juga Ke, but he doesn't harmonize with the new general. So Tyler, it's up to you whether Juga Ke gets to join your army or not. Who, in, who is the oldest sponsored officer in terms of sponsorship? If you mean who sponsored an officer first, then the answer is, I believe, Sarah. However, the officer she sponsored was Lu Jung, which she is no longer sponsoring. 
So if you mean which officer that is currently sponsored has been sponsored the longest, then it's almost definitely Tsong Chen with David. It's completely your choice, mate, and there's no right or wrong answer. It's not about my judgment, it's about your judgment. And Jujun... Jujun can be as out of the loop as you want him to be. Jugaka is relatively new to the faction, so... There's no reason why you would necessarily know him anyway. We'll learn to like each other, so he's obviously coming in then. Alright, so Jujun has raised a force at 57, with a 54-year-old captain, Song Yang, and a 25-year-old lieutenant in Juga Ke. Um, for now, we're going to say it's an unsanctioned army, which means, Tyler, you only get to choose what goes on with your retinue. I don't know if there's anything you want to change here. You have a level 10 mounted Lancer Militia, a level 8 one, level 6 Raider Cav, uh, level 4, 6, and 9 Saber Militia. But we've got plenty of cash, so if you would like to switch your units up, feel free. What options do you got? Well, as a Vanguard, you have as many of the uh, shock calves available as we've unlocked so as well as the lancer militia you can get peasant raiders raider cavalry or lance cavalry you can also get the first level g militia from the green group archer militia from the blue group and mounted saber militia from the yellow group you can get the first level saber militia from the purple group the faction specific hidden axes and fists of the bandit queen and the uh, sort of special, like, unlockable pearl dragons as well. Chung Jung just swimming in gold. I don't think Ju Jun's particularly had the most illustrious career, but he certainly had a strong career. He's been a captain for, I don't know, close to 40 years, if not more. Swap out the Sabres for Axie Boys. All right, I think I know what that translates to. So, we're swapping out all three of the Sabre Militia? Or just ones of certain levels? Because the retraining them will reduce them in most cases to a level 1 unit. If you're at the Archer Militia or the Peasant Raiders, they will be retrained to level 3. But in any case, that's going to be a loss for all, all of your units. Yeah, it's the number in the bottom left where the colour is, is the unit level. So this is a level 10 unit of cavalry. Swap out the level 4 for Axie Boys. Which Axie Boys? Because there's Hidden Axes and Fists of the Bandit Queen who both have dual axes. Fists of the Bandit Queen. Done. Any other changes? Good with that. Cool. Um, we did say in last week's episode that unsanctioned armies can only train militia units. I think that is unless they are an administrator slash counsellor. But these guys are not, so they can only train militia units. However, Juga Kerr knows he doesn't need those G militia, and we probably need some more archers in this army. So, he's going to retrain. And 
Song Yang is going to retrain a couple of his units as well to try and balance the force out. Cool, there we go. Right, that's all the training they're going to do. We've now got an army in the east. Han An Yue is replenishing. However, I think the Bandit Queen is going to send her on a mission to head down this way. So even though she's replenishing, she should be able to move through our land this turn, down there. So she's on the move. The Bandit Queen has moved. David is still going west. And with him arriving, Lu Jung's going to disband her retinue. I'll keep Wang Yi up until Doomsday arrives. And then Jiang Wan. I think because it's winter and he's replenishing, we're just going to have him in camp. That means we are still missing Ryan's level up, but that's okay. Alright, we're going to end the winter and thus end 228 AD. Did I miss anything when uh, Tyler came in? Don't think I did. Ma Zun will sign peace with us for a total of 29,500 copper over the course of 10 turns. Who would he be negotiating with? Uh, pretty much directly with the Bandit Queen. And he's going to get told to screw off because we're taking all of his land. <laughs> Tribute or nothing, says Song Jian. Honey, if you wanted to try and find a candidate to adopt, you can certainly have a look. You are, after all, the Bandit Queen's husband. I felt a bit strange when you were Lu Jung and David was Song Chen and you guys were married, but now I'm not sure if it's weirder that it's you, your character that's essentially married to my character, but I'm the woman and you're the guy. Vengeance is mine! We've had this event once before for Song Jin, but I'm going to read it again because Sarah's sponsoring him now. The burden of a vengeful duty that long clouded this general's happiness is finally lifted. Through sheer chance, they encounter their target on a lonely road and satisfy their responsibility once and for all. Song Jin just murdered a dude. And now he's happy. Give me a look. Okay, we'll do that when we've checked all of these. Uh, that's fine. We gained a clay rat. Uh, let's do the builds first. Um, Imotech Jing... Uh, Jing Pei. She, her has finished its um, horse exchange. If you wanted to do anything else, the only option it has is to upgrade the horse exchange or the settlement itself. But let me know. Shangdang is going to upgrade its drifter farming camp to a farm labourer camp. Tai Yuan. Hmm. What are we doing with Tai Yuan? It makes most of its money from industry. actually make any money from commerce but I think we'll go towards that master lacquerware artisan so it will construct private workshops and then Yan Men has upgraded to a large city 
which has not quite reduced its population problems at least not yet we'll see if that has an effect starting next turn uh, its money comes from pretty much all three areas which is strange and probably inefficient we're going to upgrade its food trader to a food market to increase its income from peasantry because that's what its um, secondary settlement actually produces squeaks welcome to the stream how is your monday going military forges military forges military forges no where was the military forges that you wanted in taiyuan i'm thinking about it i think there's i'm going to do a bit more building shuffling and demolish a few in taiyuan and probably end up with military forces forges in there eventually on my lunch break at work thank you for joining us for your lunch squeaks appreciate it all right honey you wanted to oh someone's leveled up hang on no it's because Saudia is angry should be fine it's not going to get any lower than that right you wanted to look at people we can adopt how do you want to do it do you want to do it from this list which is kind of awkwardly shuffled do you want to do it by looking at court, which kind of orders them in who has been here the longest, or search for characters and put them in age order? How would you like to try and find an adopted child? Even though it's not going to be a child, but still. I want someone younger than us. Well, younger than Jung Jung's not hard. Younger than Song Jian means younger than 38. But would a 37 year old suffice or are you talking someone who could feasibly have been your child <laughs> imotech immediately me adopt me you're older than him imotech so you're already out the running sorry it's worth a shot Jesus. Who do you get along with? What, in terms of actual relations? Uh, tai Shitsu is your old sworn brother and Jung Jung is your old sworn wife. But he's definitely older than you. You are positively acquainted with Song Yang, who is also older than you. Check the youngest options. Okie doke. We'll go to characters. Sort by faction. That way, yep. Yeah. And then sort by age. The youngest character in our faction is Juga Ke, who's 25, so he's 13 years younger than you. The second youngest is Chao Jo who is 11 years younger than you and the third youngest is Yao Zhou and Luo Qin Li and Wang Yi actually who are all 29 which makes them 9 years younger than you okay we'll try Juga Ke is agile distinguished and philanthropic Chao Zhou is fraternal formidable and spiteful but at one point was a spy for Han Xin. We've since recruited him and forgiven him. Yao Zhou is charitable, selfless and uncomplicated. Luo Qin Li, who we've only just recently captured, is energetic, handsome and gracious. And also has a fondness towards our faction because we saved her life, apparently. And Wang Yi, who also has recently been recruited and has a fondness towards us, is creative, philanthropic and dutiful. I don't know if there's like a limit to where you want, but Chun Jun is eight years younger than you. He's got a fondness towards us. I think he was captive at one point. Kind-hearted, relentless and feared. 
beyond that, we're talking about people that are seven years younger than you. Where did we get the first dude from? Juga Ke? Um, he fought for Yu Min Xiang very briefly. So briefly, in fact, that it is highly likely or highly possible that he's a spy. And we just haven't caught him yet. But I don't think we... Like, I think we got him out of the recruitment pool. We didn't capture him in a battle because we haven't really fought Yu Ming Xiang. So, I don't know what you want to do. We could also check if these people harmonize with us by cheating. Because we could, like, pretend we're going to give them the job of the Grand Director. So, uh, he... or at least... no, we can check if they harmonize with Jung Jung, but not with Song Jian. He doesn't harmonize with Chung Jung. All the ones with traits in common are trash, spies and whatnot. Yep, pretty much. So I'll let you have a think, but we'll proceed on so that we don't get stuck for the time being. Uh, right. Han An Yue is going to proceed to the border with Shang Yong commandering and do another turn of replenishment. Chung Zhang. Oh, hello. Oh, you're going to be a problem. Uh, Ju Jun. Tyler. Your army is still currently replenishing, but it's your army, so you can move it out whenever you want. Let me know. Right, David's instructions were to head west, and once she, her is safe, keep heading west. So we will have him push towards this crossing up here. I guess. In fact, we will push him as close to it as we can get. And Jiang Wan is going to cross the river as well. What are his traits? Honest, concerned, philanthropic, handsome, dutiful and arrogant. Okay, none of that says stupid. And since Jiang Wan with Ryan has actually walked across here before, he's going to... He's going to try and learn. So he's going to go down the river and land on this side. All the replenishment. Could you check Song Yang? I can. He's definitely not younger than you. He's 54. He is uncomplicated, honest, distinguished, temperamental and tolerant. More like a big brother, I suppose. Yeah. I'm not a super fat... I mean... It, technically speaking, I always say Oath Brother and Oath Sister. Because the only instances of it happening in the novel are the three Oath Brothers. Liu Bei, Guan Yu, and Zhang Fei. And in the game, Zhong Zhang and Liu Zhong are Oath Sisters. And when you adopt a like yeah when you adopt a character you're adopting them as a son but like in terms of oath sworn like it doesn't say oath brother or oath sibling it says oath sworn so you could like with that at least call them brothers sisters whatever 
But yeah, um, he, is he is he younger than Jung Jung? Yeah, by two years. How old is Tao Jin Jin? She's quite young. She's 34. So she's four years younger than Song Jian. And she is... She has a fondness towards us, which I think at some means at some point she was a, a captive. Yeah, she was. But she's also at 100 plus 100 satisfaction, which I think if she's been at that for a while... She's almost definitely not a spy. I think that's how it works. She's creative, stalwart, tolerant, trusting, trustworthy, and dutiful. Where is she at? She's in Ryan's army, I think. Yeah, she's Ryan's lieutenant. She's perfect, but I don't know this is a big decision. Well, think about it. Well, we'll keep playing and you can think about it. The age gap's not going to change. She's just going to get older. So, let's we'll continue on. Um, Tyler said all the replenishment, so they're staying put. We need to pick a reform because it's spring. Anybody got any kind of preference where we should be aiming? Sarah shouts mines. Don't think she's quite referring to the seagulls from Finding Nemo. Regime attendance or more commerce? Regime attendance being that one. I don't actually think we've got any texts that do more commerce because it'd be blue or purple if we did. And we've only got one of those available. Remember you need that reform to upgrade the mine? We did, except I went down the path that doesn't require it because it reduces overall corruption. Why are you whining at me? Yeah, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so yes, we do need that to unlock that top bit of like the mine, but we don't need it for her Don Copper Mine because we actually chose this one, which was already available because it does plus four or minus four corruption faction wide. This is the one that's locked because it requires the tech, but it doesn't do that. So. I think where does that lead to good places what the fuck that's an interesting one and what does what is it saber cav purple purple is good okay we'll get carburetor chambers then they toil in the dark for the riches of the land. What dangers lurk in the murk and shadows? What is this? Fucking Moria? But the, de the dwarves delved too deep. You know what evil they unearthed there. Alright. Let's pop a save and finish this year up. And they call it a mine. A mine! This is no mine. This is a tomb. Lord of the Rings, as presented by Wardog. Let's go. <laughs> they have a cave troll. Fool of a took. Throw yourself in next time and rid us of your stupidity. <laughs> yeah, Long Juan Yan is offering us a pitiful 880 copper for peace. She's getting told to shove it. It's gonna be fun. 
me and me and Sarah are going to binge watch the extended edition of Lord of the Rings if we can get the extended edition. Duchy of Song, sign peace with Wu. Tai Shutsu gained the honest trait, and Dan Wei gained the artful trait. Jiang Wan and Song Chen have become friends. And Jiang Wan and Song Yang no longer have their previous relationship because it's basically been overwritten. We've unlocked a merchant. An Ping has completed some construction. So we will upgrade it to a bandit hideout. Shangdang's farm labourer camp has been built. It now cannot build anything else. Why not? Needs to be a small city, needs to be a small city. Needs to be a small city. And that requires... That. Okay. So in that case, Shangdang, I think, as much as it only makes 163 copper, but it does produce 22 food, I think it's just going to stay as it is for the time being. Taiyuan has built its private workshops. We will upgrade its iron mine to an iron craft work town. And then your jaw actually makes a fair bit of cash, but it's pretty stable. Chang'an is still front line, so I don't want to touch it. Liao Xi should be focusing on industry income really. Okay. Can't build state workshops because it has a building in there from someone. So we'll come back to that. I'm tempted to give it a tribute hall because we do make tribute in diplomacy and I assume that tributaries, tribute halls and stuff stack. So I think at least for now I'm going to do that and then we'll delete that, we'll demolish that and replace it with the one that we can upgrade. Uh, hello, Bohai. Uh, hmm. I guess. At least for now, you can have more income. Okay, hold up. How much money do you make? 800. And you have 36% corruption. Which we could lower to 26. 10% of 800 is like 80. So it's actually worth more money to just upgrade to government workshops. So we'll do that. Forges in Taiyuan. Taiyuan's building something. It's, all, it's upgrading the mine, which we might as well do before we destroy something. Please upgrade my horse exchange. Very well. To a mail post. Got the full box set of Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, including all the books to go along with them. I really didn't like The Hobbit movies. I wanted to, and parts of them were amazing, but I, I didn't like them. I think that Peter Jackson's vision was lost somewhere for The Hobbit movies. Unfortunately. Okay, the horse pastures themselves seem to be clear. I'm going to move Song Chen to the road, but not quite where the horse pastures can attack him. Just in case somebody comes down. That's not really the move of somebody incompetent, but I've made it now, so... Oh well. Right. She's still replenishing. She's going to start making her way this way. 
，一往无前。统一行进，正在行进。你给丢。I think everybody's moved, except for Wang Yi, because he's not going anyway. So that'll do. <laughs> Did I say she's making her way downtown, walking fast, faces pass, and she's homebound? <laughs> Are you happy now, Tyler? You made this happen. Living in harmony. Some might say that being too trusting is a sure sign of folly, and that ruin follows anyone too easily led. On the contrary, being trusting makes a strong bedrock for friendship, as two of your generals discover. To believe in another's ability not to deceive you is a truly special gift. Relationship deepens between Danwei and Zhu Ling. Rebellion imminent in Yanmen. Why? What are you doing, Yanmen? What are you do? Hello. Yes, I would like to see the names of the places, please. Okay. So in three turns. Wait, what? Oh, in the next turn or two. Oh shit! Yes, yeah, at minus three. Idiot. Um. Tax exemption. Problem solved. Can I request my commander to change one of my sabers to saber cavalry? You most certainly can. And she will most certainly tell you that she would be happy to do that were we not in the middle of enemy territory where we can't recruit troops. Hey. Hey, Sarah. What? gained an artisan. I am not through... Oh, no. 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 I mean, I'm going to get a scholarship to King's College. Probably shouldn't brag, but dag, I amaze and astonish. Problem is, I got a lot of brains but no polish. Got a holler just to be heard for every word I drop knowledge. I'm a diamond in the rough. A shiny piece of coal, trying to reach my goal. My power of speech, unimpeachable. Only 19, but my mind is older. These New York City streets getting colder. I shoulder every burden, every disadvantage. I've learned to manage. I don't have a gun to brandish. I walk these streets famished. Planets to spawn it. Screwed it! Ugh! I hate doing that. That needs to be done like seven times before you can get it right. We're not doing Eminem and all, which is like the clone of Eminem. Eminem and all. All right, let's upgrade this uh, bandit hideout to a bandit lair. Saudia still not happy, but she seems to be handling it well. Her knee. So when's your rap career starting? Hopefully never. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Herne should mostly be making its money from... Well, it shouldn't even be making money, really, but it's apparently making a stack load from peasantry and industry. Which is nice. So I guess we'll let it continue doing that. Less corruption in adjacent commanderies. Who's adjacent to her name? Herdong, Ye, Pingyuan. Do any of them make a particularly large amount of money? Herdong makes a considerable sum. Ye, not really. Pingyuan, yes. So actually. Oh. It would make a loss. But we'll flip it. Let's uh, get a coin maker in, Herney.
And then in Liao Xi, I said we were going to... Oh, we can just straight up convert it. That's easier. Let's do that. Fat stacks upon fat stacks. Yeah. Something tells me I'm not going to make fat stacks. Ever. In any way. <laughs> Han Anyue is going to attack Shangyong Lumberyard down here. Which is owned by Ma Zun. It's a decisive victory with low casualties, which is excellent. So we are going to snag that. Do I got all my boys yet? You probably do, Tyler, but we'll check. We will occupy. We gained... That guy, I think, was already there at the start of the turn, but that black thoroughbred is definitely new, so that must have been from her victory. She, as a character, is fulfilled, so... Again, we're going to roleplay. She doesn't want to claim the Black Thoroughbred. However, she will try and pass it on to someone. And it's probably going to be Chao Zhou, who is her friend. That is, unless manipulative Captain Jing Pei has anything to say about it, because she's trusting and seems to listen to him. So, Jing Pei, do you have anything to say about your general gifting the new black thoroughbred horse to your rival, Lieutenant Chiao Zhou? He's saying no comment. But I'm wondering if that was before he realized that he's rivals with Chiao Zhou, because he is. So I'm going to ask for you to confirm the no comment Imatech. Otherwise the horse is going to Chao Zhou. But I would like to ask she takes the exceptional brown horse. No comment confirmed. Um, yeah, the stallion is not her loot, which is the problem. The Black Thoroughbred was just gained from that battle, so she gets to gift it. So it's gone to Chao Zhou. Now, Zhong Zhang, where are we at? Over here. Uh, still, oh my god, is that guy's name really her, her? <sighs> Come on, game! This lit. Oh. Jesus. Recruit him if you can. <laughs> oh my god. I, I don't think we'd... Uh, she can't win the fight over there, I don't think. So I think she needs to, like, hold off a little bit. In fact... We're going to station her there in ambush and see if we can lure the enemy general into a trap. Her, <laughs> her. That's the name of the general, not because the trap's funny. Tyler, you, you are indeed fully replenished. Your army is ready to go. So far, Song haven't even appeared on the south bank of the river. So I don't know if their part in this war is token. However, you can make whatever move you want to make. If you want to make one. Let's see if they've got someone in that city, mayhaps. Okay. So we want to move down to the riverbank. Where that crossing is. Yeah. Alright. Don't know. Oh, you can see the city. It's got Wang Baolan in it. And she has Xiang Hui Jun and Zhuo Qin Yue as lieutenants. So there is indeed an army in that city. They shouldn't be able to reach you anyway. Jiang uh, Wan, have you done the military forge in Tai Yuan yet? No, honey, because Tai Yuan is still building a mine. It's not another five turns before that's 
finished. Patience. Jong Wan is going to attack on Ding farmland. And with a decisive victory, he's going to seize it. Got enough movement for an ambush or not? You should have, Tyler, I'll check. I'm just going to and I'm going to check the ancillaries. Nope, no extra loot. Jong Wan and Tao Jin Jin have become oath sworn, though. Oh, you might not actually, Tyler. No, you are under 25% movement left, so you can't ambush. However, Song Chen is going to be sieging Shuo Fang horse pastures with another decisive victory. Gonna call for a divorce. Why? Because builders don't build qu as quickly as she wants. It's gonna be an occupy as well. And there was still no additional loot. Uh, okay, yeah, we've already done the buildings. Don't forget as well, guys, that we do still have two administrator positions open, a grand director position and a grand tutor position. So there are plenty of options for position nominations. Chungji. Yeah, I don't think so. You're clearly a spy, mate. Oh, oh, I want one. The sponsorship thing would definitely work really well for Warhammer as well. I might yoink it if I ever start streaming again. Feel free, man. Probably would work well for Warhammer because you can rename all but the main heroes. So I, I would probably do it in Warhammer as you can sponsor a character but not one of the main heroes. So you can rename them. But I just don't particularly like Warhammer as much as 3K. Which is why I'm not doing it. So Song Jen wants to to do what, hun? What position does Song Jen want? I'll sponsor a unit. You could absolutely do sponsor a unit as well. I would probably make Warhammer much more of a tiered thing. So for like army commanders, probably sponsors only. Uh, agents could be sponsors or followers. And then like sponsor a unit would probably be anybody. Because you can rename units in Warhammer at any point. It might actually make a lot more sense in Warhammer as well, sponsoring a unit, because, like, that's your unit then. People care about where it is. What are those positions about? Okay. So what we've decided is that the Chancellor basically gets a bigger say on everything. Uh, the Grand Commandant gets to sort of if they want proclaim like policies on how to treat prisoners from certain factions and also gets to be a lieutenant uh, not a lieutenant a general for as long as they want they basically don't have to retire the grand excellency is in charge of construction for the whole faction the grand director is in charge of assignments for the whole faction and the grand tutor is in charge of um diplomacy for the fo for the whole faction basically um because they advise officials in foreign affairs and personal conduct, conduct when dealing with envoys and the director oversees community organ organization in the commanderies. Excellency oversees treasury and development projects. Grand Commandant is military matters and yeah. So you want to be the Grand Director, Song Jen. I mean, I'm not... <laughs> It's just because of who the faction leader is. I'm not even going to ask anybody's opinion. I guess that you can voice objections if you want. If you really want it on record that your character disagrees, guys. But uh, there's no way Jung Jang wouldn't promote Husbando Oathsworn into Grand Director position. So Song Jen is now the Grand Director. Stop all. I disagree. I object! Hey Stoppel, how are you doing? Welcome to the stream. 
How is your Monday going, mate? Alrighty. So Song Jen now has his position. We've moved these guys. We've moved these guys. We've moved Ju Jun. So I think we've done everything we can do for the harvest. So let's move on. It's a day off. So is that a good thing? Objection! Phoenix Wright style. I think I know what Phoenix Wright is. Like an old game where you played a lawyer, right? But something like that and it was pretty cheesy or something. I'm sure I've seen it in a video. Oh, I got another achievement. Bandits of the Marsh. Playing as Jung Jung Constructor Bandit Lair. Cool. Uh, Han Xin and Su Shu Juan are no longer no longer have a relationship. They showed great promise and were promoted to office accordingly. Okay. An Ping has built its bandit lair. There's not a lot else it can build. It is losing one public order because of the population size. If we upgraded that city, we would get an extra build slot. So you know what? I'm going to do that, and then we're going to fill it with a public order building. Or Yin Li's going to do that, rather. I need to get used to saying that. Uh, Herne has finished its coin maker conversion. So we'll up it to a grand treasury mint. And Liao Xi has completed its conversion over to communal workshops. Which is lovely. Where would the faction leader go if they got disbanded? They go in the recruitment pool if the faction gets defeated. Right. Uh, Song Chen. Got a bit of replenishment to do, but he should be fine to move out. We'll have him start moving towards the regional city at Shuofang. And Chiang Wan can begin moving out towards Anding Toolmaker. Whoops. Ooh, he has actually. Oh, wait a minute. <gasps> There's a chance! Seize the opportunity! A Pyrrhic victory. That'll do. Not how that works. Is the military forge ready yet? No! We have captured Guo Tu, the 51 year old administrator of Wu Du. He is temperamental, stern, modest, and one-eyed. But say if the faction was disbanded without their faction being destroyed, where would they go? Why would a faction be disbanded without the faction being destroyed? Release. Alright, I guess we'll go with release. Since Song Jen is in the army and is the husbando. We've captured 58-year-old Lu Wei Huang, who is concerned, ascetic, fraternal, and scarred. the faction leader I don't think you can have like you can't release the faction leader like you can members of the faction because they are the faction leader oh god Jinpei saying execute he has two rivals but neither of them are our officers honey what do you think Song Jen is in this army that's taken these prisoners and is the husbando. Dearest husbando, what do you think? Who are his rivals? Uh, Liu Tingsheng and Han Zidao, who we I don't even know what faction they're in, probably his own.
release. We've also captured 55 year old Yuan Xie, who is superstitious, trustworthy, cautious, and maimed. What should we do with the Yuan Xie? What should we do with the release? Okay. She just said that to stop me singing, to be honest. But fine. We'll take the replenishment, and then we will attack, which apparently the silk trader doesn't have a garrison left, so... Huzzah! It's ours! Too old. Yeah, it's pretty old. It is autumn, which probably means it's not smart to begin besieging a city. But she is direct, uncomplicated, and intrepid, so let's at least move that way. There is a small army in the city, or on the outside of it. Oh, she can't get there. Idiot. And now she's crossed. Why did I do that? That was stupid. Tyler! It looks like the army you spotted in Taishan has moved to the river crossing down towards Pingyuan salt mine. Song Jen would like to celebrate with his waifu. Oh dear. Time to intercept, or try to at least. How are you going to do that? Are you going to stay on the north? Oh, wow. You're, there's no road down to the crossing you're at, so your movement is actually garbage right now. If we forced marched, you could get to the salt mine... Firstly, can I request again to change one Sabre to Sabre Cavalry? No, because you're back in enemy territory. Because <laughs> I accidentally made her go too far. So you can't recruit anything in uh, enemy territory. Our side of the river don't think they'll be able to attack the salt mine if they move over. They shouldn't be able to. Um, at normal movement, you can typically cross the crossing. Like, these... <laughs> When there's a river involved, the movement predicty thing isn't very reliable because it doesn't show the movement on the opposite bank. But what tends to be the case is that at normal movement, you have to walk up to the edge of the crossing, then cross, then move. In forced march, you can pretty much cross and move some distance, but they'll be in forced march, so they can't attack. So, yeah, I think if you forced marched to, like, the mine, because you can't get to the crossing... But if you went to the mine, there's no way they'd be able to attack the mine next turn. So if you just normal move, we should be able to catch. Uh, yeah. Debatably, because you have the roads and stuff. So, yeah, you could normal move to there. And you should be okay. It's up to you. Whichever way you want to do it. Eh, force march, I suppose. Juju just making command decisions based on a shrug. Eh, let's do that. Alright. Um, we should have done the buildings. We've done all of our military moves. We've got nothing else on the go. So let's move it along to the winter. That army withdrew. Tyler. Obviously saw you move across and were like, no thanks. Winter 229 AD. Charitable versus greedy. Whilst on a stroll, you come across two women having a discussion turned argument. They entreat you. Both halves of a divided orange will taste just as good, posits the first. But this one just takes the whole orange. It's intolerable. I take what is rightfully mine, argues the second. Their spat is somewhat amusing. 
And we are going to side with Cao Jie over Ti Shu Yu because Zhong Zhang is greedy. She who earned the spoils, you declared, should reap the benefit. Let her eat the orange. And we've gained the Zhuang Zhe, no, Zhuang Zhe Ancillary. It's an interesting one. Alright, let's do the buildings first. Ping Yuan has built Grand State Workshops. It's currently in positive public order, which is good. Um, we will upgrade this, I think. So the Bureau of Mining Subsidiaries to the Bureau of State Mining Expeditions. Uh, she, her has finished its mail post, Imatech. Chung Jung and Cao Jie are like besties at this point. Hmm, potential daughter. Can I request the Zhuang Zhe to be taken as my ancillary? Upgrade again, please. Okay, let me just double check where the uh, orders are going to go. They're going to travel up the roads this way. Jump on the river. Yeah, there's not really anyone that can get in the way. So, um, decision time. Imatek, do you want lodge or tea parlor? The lodge provides 50% boost to commerce and a flat 140 to commerce, whereas the tea parlor is a flat 170 but only a 40% boost. Tea because I'm British. Okay. Can't really argue with that logic. Uh, and no, you can't... Well, I mean, you can request that you will get the uh, Zhuangzi, but... You're not requesting it of Hanan Yue, you know that, right? Like, it's in the faction's ancillary pool. You'll be requesting it from the Bandit Queen. Um, we're going to start the turn off with uh, Song Chen catching Han Xin out. Ha ha Han Xin with your 649 men. What a muppet. Yeah, I know. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll I'll have a look at that in a second. Oh dear, his captain and his lieutenant were killed. We will take the replenishment. And he has gained a white thoroughbred. Um, which Song Chen already rides a white thoroughbred. Can somebody maybe make a note? Or maybe tag Dave. Oh, David's not back until next stream. I don't want to be saving. I don't want to set a precedent of saving loot that long. I guess it just goes straight in the pool. David should have been here if he wanted to uh, dish it out. Uh, enemy officers Fung Li and Bing Pei Yu both killed. Jing Pei no longer has a negative relationship with Han Xin because Han Xin didn't have space for the relationship, I guess. Alright, Jing Pei, not, yeah, Jing Pei, you want to request that you be given the Zhuang Zhe. Simple tales belie great truths to live and die by. You are not necessarily friends with the bandit queen and so since she has no relationship with you I'm gonna say that her greedy trait takes precedence and she refuses is Han Xin son of the, ha the son of Han Sui I'm pretty sure but we can check He's also uh, Han An Yue. He's your general's brother. And yes, he is the son of Han Sui. Check Cao Jie's traits, please. Can we what? Can we what what? What are you talking about? Cao Jie is stalwart, greedy, and brilliant. She's 32. Oh, 
Oh, can we what? I was going to say, can somebody like maybe make a note that uh, David has a white thoroughbred to dish out as loot if he wants to, but I'm not doing it now. I, I got confused between David and Ryan. I think Ryan will turn up at some point during the stream. I know David isn't going to. So if David was going to turn up at some point in the stream, I would have made a note of that white thoroughbred and asked him when he got here. But I don't want to set a precedent of holding everyone's loot for whenever. No, I don't want you to. I don't want you to. I just said that. I don't want to set a precedent of holding everyone's loot until they turn up to dish it out. Like, we're not going to do that. Don't worry about it. Don't re at me. Did, did you look at Saudi's traits? She is also perfect. I mean, she's greedy, so I don't think so, but sure, I guess. Han Anua is going to besiege this settlement. Uh, that's at top level. That can't be upgraded any further. We haven't done this yet, have we? I've done that one. And that one. Okay, so. The food market in Yanmen is the only one we haven't done now. If we stop exempting them from tax, they have a public order problem. Big time. Okay, um, should have peasantry income, it does, it's also, I don't know how useful these private workshops really are, considering they boost commerce by 25% and industry by 5%, and neither of them make over 500 to begin with, but the flat rate is under 200. So I think Yin Li is going to order that to be demolished. We're a bandit faction. Would Jung Jung allow Greedy in her own faction? Considering she has sided with Cao Jie on multiple occasions by now, yes. Now I think both of you have valid points, like... What Sarah's point is, is that Jung Jung sides with Cao Jie over other people, so there's a building relationship there. But I do think Imhotek has a valid point in that Jung Jung being greedy doesn't necessarily... Like, but you're both looking at it from a different angle, right? Sarah's looking at it from the angle of Cao Jie also wants everybody's money, same as Jung Jung does. Imhotek is looking at it from the point of view of Cao Jie wants Jung Jung's money because she's greedy. And I think really it depends on the relationship as to whether she would want Jung Jung's money or everybody else's. Apparently Wun Hui is also starting to be a little bit unhappy with us. But I don't care. Uh, Jung Wan is going to move up to the border since it's winter anyway. Song Chen has already moved. She's moved. Bandit Queen has taken the Silk Trader. So that brings us to Tyler, who is over here in Pingyuan Salt Mine. When's the stream ending, Imatech? Um, Probably about an hour, because we were a late starting. So we've probably got about an hour left. May as well give chase. Okay. How are you doing that? Are you going to cross the crossing here, or are you force marching to try and cross, which I think you would be able to do? I can't really select it unless you're going to go, I don't think, but get a foothold over there and keep them from crossing. On our side, you can get down there with a normal move onto our bank.
Jujun, who is now 58. Might need to go now so I can watch my blowing up history and undercover billionaire. No worries, Zimatek, you can go when you need to go. Yeah, says Tyler. Alright, Jujun is going to move down to the bank of the Yellow River. He is now threatening Song's new land that we've allowed them to have. And that's going to be it for the winter, I think, because we can't really do anything else, so... Hey, hey, Dano Snow! Uh, that Song army is now down the other end, Tyler. How are you doing, Dano? How's your Monday going, mate? Welcome to the stream. Right, I'll hop off now. Any expertise item I put in a request to obtain? <laughs> Most of them are going to be denied, mate, because the Bandit Queen's greedy and she doesn't have any friendship with you, but I'll take a note that you're requesting anything that boosts expertise. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> My Monday's going alright, mate, yeah. I'm getting super excited. I've just realised how busy I am over the next like week or so. Like I've got so much stuff on. That I don't normally have on. Oh no. Oh, okay. That's not quite as bad as I thought it was. The Duchy of Shu Han has confederated Liu Zhang. Liu Zhang actually lived down here. Um, this is a historical event. It's something Liu Bei did in history. Um, he's pretty much, in my opinion, like infamous for the Romance of the Three Kingdoms novel. For essentially either being handed land on a plate land and titles or taking land and titles from people and then basically painting it like he's doing everyone a favor he's a bit of an arsehole and uh he did that to liu jong in history as well uh basically walked into his lands down at chengdu and said this is mine now we're both from the liu family and i'm better than you which is what he's just done he probably had an event for it so shu han has confederated liu jong Shu Hui has been succeeded by Feng Xiu Pei. Uh, Bohai has completed its government workshops. Less corruption in adjacent commanderies. 29. 40% corruption. Six hundred thirty-five percent corruption. You know what? It probably wouldn't be a bad thing for Bohai to get the uh, currency inspector's office and go down that route. What is going on? Oh, chat just went mental. Uh, see you later, Imatech. Gorkul, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the doghouse, buddy. What kind of stuff? Uh, like haircut, voting, doctor's appointment. Like, there's just stuff going off this week all the time. It's not stuff that's going to occupy my entire day. It just means I have almost something going on every single day. Woo, 250? 250. Follower 250? Are you really, Goku? Holy shit, we're up to 250 followers, guys. No, good round, boy. Check my chat. I'm looking at it. I'm reading it now. Why are you angry at me? Does Ping Yuan have walls? Yes. Anything that says city on it has walls. Anything that says town doesn't in terms of the main settlement buildings. Uh, thinking just push over and take the trade port. I'm already in the doghouse. Can I be allowed? Oh, okay. Hi, Nate. When the stream's finished, yeah. Sarah keeping you in line? Yeah, I know, right? Uh, thinking just push over and take the trade port. Mm, Ping Yuan's garrison is a single retinue. She has three. So even with walls, it's probably not going to hold for too long. But it's up to you, Tyler. It's your army. To be fair, we don't super need to 
cross over and take Song's land. We can settle for just not having them take our land. Having something on every day is tiring, Dano. Yeah, I know, right? It's up to you, Tyler. What do you want to do? I think while you have a think about it, we'll go and check everybody else. Han, on you, uh... Uh... Still a close victory. They start taking attrition soon. I think she's going to hold on to that siege. I think... Yeah, why not? Bandit Queen's going to move up to the border for a bit of extra replenishment before she advances. And she'll drop into ambush. Jiang Wan is going to smash on Ding Toolmaker. We'll fight it as a night battle just in case. Just move to a spot where you can move either way and stop them from pushing in, I suppose. Alright, if that's what you want to do, mate. It's completely up to you. If you want to roll the dice on kind of attacking and hoping they don't take land behind you, that's your decision. A would-be assassin. While establishing control in the newly occupied town, one of your officials is set upon by a particularly burly local. The attacker is a bona fide warrior, but the targeted official is also an ex-soldier, aptly skilled in combat himself. After a spe spectacular duel, the assailant is eventually subdued and detained. Bonus experience for Wang Jen. Flipping Wang Jen just being like, nah, I'll, I'll handle this, chaps, don't worry. Song Jen wants to talk to Jung Jong about the future and potentially adopting. He wants her opinion. Alright, let's, uh. That's just been gained in this battle. And Ryan's not here. Um, a military G. It's almost a shame that he's not here. Uh, well, I mean, it is a shame that he's not here. Actually. Song Chen's going to move towards Shuo Fang. Uh, we'll get uh, Tyler's move done. Tyler, he said, just move to somewhere kind of in the middle. So, like... There, literally between the city and the mine. Yeah. What does Song Jian want to ask Jung Jong, honey? What? What? What are you thinking, husband? Uh, let's see, still got Jiang Wan's promotion. Still got these two being grumpy. Yan Men has finished that demolition. Have we not been through the buildings? Oh, we went through that one. Not that one. Okay. Uh, this one's going to be a Confucian shrine. It's Husbando. I are Husbando. You will refer to me as such. Well, what, dear Husbando, did you wish to discuss? Apparently Dai has an available building that I did not know about. It's also having public order problems because of population. So we will throw a Confucian shrine in there as well. Zhongshan 
Oh, Jong Shan is uh, is your settlement, Tyler. Why have a waifu when you can be the waifu? Exactly. And he wants to know if there's anyone she trusts to carry on the Thai Brotherhood when they're gone. Yes, her sister. <laughs> Let's have a look at who she has relations with. She is old sworn with her sister. She's old sworn with Yin Li. And she's old sworn with Song Jen. And she hates pretty much everybody else. So... In terms of adopting people, especially if you're looking at people that are younger than both of you, or at least younger than her and not you, then there's not really anyone she trusts. She only trusts three people. One of them's the heir, one of them's the Grand Excellency, and the other one is the Grand Director. What about the other green ticks? They're just acquaintances, though. Saojia is in there, and they do harmonize. But they don't particularly have a relationship. So I would find it hard to justify Jung Jung being willing to place the future of the Brotherhood in the hands of someone that she barely considers an acquaintance. If that relationship was nurtured into a friendship or even an, an oath, then maybe, but not right now. I don't think she'd adopt Tao Jie just because they share a few things in common. F. <laughs> F. My dreams are dashed. What kind of stuff was I going with before, Tyler? Do you mean for Zhong Shan? Sorry, I didn't see when you said that. Um, <laughs> Zhong Shan's had a strange history uh, because you because you weren't around very much the last few streams. We had like Doomsday as Shun Yu issuing construction orders across the entire empire at one point, and then he was stopped. And Lu Zhong did a few builds, and now it's Yin Li's job unless you do it. So, like, you have a tributary court in there, because originally when we made Gongsunzan a tributary, he still had Dai Commandery, so we kind of built a tributary court here to be like, it's only a short distance for them to walk to pay tribute. Uh, you have irrigated farms, because your secondary settlement is a livestock farm, so they kind of harmonize with each other. And then we built, uh, Lu Jung built guard posts in there when Song declared war on us, and the front line was, like, right here because it boosted your garrison, but you don't really need it. So, really, I mean, you can tear down whatever you want anyway, but when you're saying, like, what kind of stuff were you building before? Random shit, depending on who was ordering it, is the answer. <laughs> Demolish them guard posts, boy. Demolished. Done. Uh, no, I don't want to do that, or that, and Onding, what's wrong with Onding? Rebellion mustering, oh, over there, okay, because it was from the previous owners. Alright, uh, we need to pick a reform. I just want to have a little bit of a look at something. Gorkul was indeed follower number 250. That's insane, guys. I've been streaming just short of a year and we're at 250 followers. I never thought I'd crack 100, to be fair. 250 is pretty special. Thank you, Nate, if you're still in the chat, mate. Appreciate that very much, getting me to that milestone. And thank you to everybody else as well. Couldn't have done it without all 250 of you, obviously. Right, what are we going to do for reform? Looks like we've run out of options on the blue tree until we build certain stuff. Private tutors requires 
that we build a county school, which we don't have. We've completed the purple tree. So we've only really got green, red, and yellow. Or orange. Sarah's saying orange. We only have one choice on here, which is regime attendance. Which Imatech has been pushing for, like, for the last three years worth of reforms, I think. So since Song Jian wants regime attendance, we will get regime attendance. Those with the ear of the powerful hear their words and must be watched appropriately because of it. So we've now unlocked Sabre Cavalry for our commanders. Go, go, go! Alright. Save first because we are in spring. And we will proceed forward. Ironic considering who pushed for the reform. Yeah, I guess. And indeed has the ear of the powerful. Hello, Mazum. You will sign peace with us for... Essentially, he's paying that and then doubling it because by the time he's paid that off, it would be. It would have a zero on the end. Plus, he's willing to give us Ba Xi Toolmaker, which is somewhere down there. But, since he's dealing directly with the Bandit Queen and he's losing and we're taking his territory, he's getting a no. Han Xin's got another army sprinting across behind Song Chen. Song signed a peace treaty with Han Xin. Wu signed a peace treaty with Feng Xiu Pei. Bo Hai has built its currency inspector's office, so we'll get a coin maker. Yanmen has built its Confucian Shrine, which has not yet solved its public order issues, so we'll upgrade to a temple. Dai has a Confucian Shrine, which has helped its issues. What does this actually do? Makes cavalry cheaper, basically. Okay. So it makes some money from industry, but really, that's it. We'll upgrade the industry building, though, to uh, government provincial workshops. And Zhongshan Tyler's uh, guard posts have been demolished. You now have a spare space in Zhongshan. Tai Yuen, military forges? I'm fairly sure that Tai Yuen hasn't completed its buildings because for the last 15 turns I've been checking the building pop up that informs you of new buildings. <laughs> and it still hasn't. Next turn. Something farmy. Okay, we'll have a look. Um, you already have land development, which is the most direct one. Grain storage increases your public order and your reserve capacity if you should ever be besieged. Government support increases percentage-wise your food production and your income from peasantry. So it's a decent enough building to support with. But they're the only real food things. Government support. Drifter farming camps. Next turn. Next turn. Soon, TM. That's still fine. Okay. Uh, Song Chen. Gonna destroy another army from Han Xin. Bof, bof, bof. 
今日此战乃是大义之胜。Oh dear, Tyler. Guo Rui Ying, thirty-three. Oh my God, strong, tough, and temperamental. Why is she a strategist? She literally gets plus ten resolve from these two traits put together, plus ten percent AP damage. And plus 10 melee evasion. Yes, give me her. Oh, she then loses like four of it. So she has a net gain of plus six resolve. Because of the temperamental. She's only 33. It's technically David's choice since it's his army, but I think we'll grab her anyway. <laughs> She's a strategist, though, so she can't even duel. We'll take the replenishment. Ju Jian says off with her head. Ju <laughs> Jun, Tyler. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't going to say anything. Song Chen and Shun Yu are now right. <gasps> Shun Yu has joined Han Xin! And he's Han Xin's Grand Excellency. Oh my god, how appropriate is that? Shun Yu has joined Han Xin. Wow. And now... He, he and Song Chen are rivals. And it comes full circle. Alright. Jiang Wan is going to get rid of these yellow turbans. Apparently brutally. Okay, the replenishment. Doesn't look like he gained any ancillaries. They do have a settlement in Anding Large Town, which it seems almost silly not to take, but we could potentially take it on the way back. Bandit Queen's going to take Wudu Silk Trader because it's on her way. So I think we will have Zhang Wei... Zhang Wei... That's a historical character, Zhang Wan. Move himself up towards the border. What are we doing down here? Close victory if fought. Continue the siege. Ju Juniper. Ju Junberries. Oh dear, we're giving him silly names. Um. The Song army is now on the river, Tyler, which you could probably engage them on the river. I think you could make the move. It's a very, very close battle, but it and it might even go slightly in their favor. I'm not sure where that Ooh. and don't forget, you can't fight river battles. It has to be delegated. So if it says you're going to lose, you're going to lose. It's in that kind of zone where it might still say you would win, but it's up to you if you want to do anything. Just observe them for now. I'll drop you into an encamp stance then if you're going to stay there. Uh, okay. Who the heck's that? Oh wow, the yellow turbans have actually taken Luo Yang. From Shu Han, I guess. Must have been Shu Han. Let's proceed, though. Next turn, next turn. I want my military forges. Hello, what's going on here? The Duchy of Song have attacked Ping Yuan Salt Mine. And the Salt Mine cannot defend itself. She does a lot of damage. And they have some pretty hench troops as well. Plus trebs. 
Yeah, I think we'd find that incredibly difficult to defend. So I'm just going to let them have it. Sniped out from under Jujun's nose. Because he was sitting in his tent in his in the middle of his camp going, Jujuniper? Jujun berries? Kingdom of Wu invites you to form a coalition if we give them the Zhuangzi. Their attitude is very negative. I feel like this is a no. Although... I, I do not want the map that way round. Please stop. <laughs> that was just odd. So if we made... If we made... Formed a coalition with Wu. They're like down this way. It's through ownership. Yeah, so they're down here in sort of the center of the south. And... Shu Han and Yu Min Xiang are their vassals. Yu Min Xiang's practically non existent, but Shu Han's pretty big. It would mean, at least for the time being, that we'd be relatively safe. I don't know. Because if Wu declares war on us, as much as they're all the way down there, we'd have to fight Shu Han, and that front is getting pretty lengthy. A coalition of convenience, yeah, exactly, Husbando. I mean, I doubt it'd last very long. At some point, he'd probably stab us in the back if we didn't stab him in the back first. But at least for, you know, a year or so, he can't turn around and declare war on us. Although I'm not sure I want to give him that. So I'm going to see if I can give him something else. Would you prefer a clay rat and a wooden fish? Apparently that's fair. And you know what? Just to make it a decent deal for you, we will even pay you... 100 copper? No. Yeah, like that much. 192 is enough. So like 190 copper. Yeah. Especially for a clay rat, a wooden fish and 190 copper. That's like a really good deal to protect us. Song declared war on the yellow turbans. We lost Ping Yuan Salt Mine. Whilst Ju Jun was contemplating the many forms of Ju. Tyler, do you want to do anything about this uh, settlement that we've lost? Take him out! In he goes. Wow! A valiant defeat? Tyler! What do you want to do? You junkyard. Jujun is actually a pretty damn good dual threat. He would definitely be able to counter Jua Chinua if she would duel him. And in fact, Song Yang does a lot of damage too. I think we could get it if you actually fight it out. Bish, please. I don't think you can, because it's going to have, yeah, towers and, check, uh, and choke points. And you have no trebs and no fire arrows, which means you would just have to leave the towers standing. So, I promise you, in a field battle, yeah, maybe. 
In a siege battle? Hell no. It'd be what we in the trade refer to as a custafuck. If they sally out, it becomes a siege, right? I mean, if they sally out, it becomes a field battle, if that's what you mean. Yes. Yes. If they sally out, it does do that. But if we attack them, it's a siege. Which, highly do not recommend. <laughs> Just see if they sally out. Okay, so we're going to starve them out. Yeah, boy. They will immediately start taking attrition damage, so I'm guessing they will sally out in the end turn. Uh, okay, uh, Zhu Ling has gained the philanthropic trait. We've gained a stone statue of Confucius. King Yuan has built a Bureau of State Mining Expeditions. This public order is fine for the time being, so I'm going to leave it. Um, Imotech has gone, so I'm not going to upgrade Xi He. An Ping has built... It's, or has upgraded its city, so we'll get it a Confu Confucian Shrine. Bleh. Tai Yuan has upgraded its iron mines. So, honey, we need to destroy something to make room for the military forges, right? Um, I think the thing we don't want in here is probably these irrigated farms. Where's the 230% peasantry boost come from? I have no idea. Don't know. But it's basically irrelevant. I think these farms need to go. And we might as well upgrade the craftsman shacks. Since it only takes one turn, so it's not going to get in the way of building the military forges next turn. Yanmen has built its Confucian Temple. Its public order is now on the rise. Let's improve... Well, let's get it a coin maker to reduce corruption in Tai Yuan. And then Zhongshan, Tyler, has finished its Drifter Farming Camp. And can upgrade either that or the city. Upgrade it, then the city whenever you can. Okay. Farm labourer camp. Go! Yeah, we know about that. We know about that. We know about that. I think we know about all of these. Yes, we do. Okay. Song Chen is going to proceed and destroy Han Lan's army. Again. Wrecked. She's dead. Oh, we definitely gained loot, and we've captured Shun Yu. Oh dear. David isn't here. He has captured his rival, Shun Yu. You know what? I don't. I'm not going to do this a lot. It's not going to set a precedent, but I am going to try and message David and see what he wants to do.
I don't know if he'll answer because he's at work, but I'm going to give him a couple of minutes. Execute, I'd think. It's the natural conclusion. But it's David's character. Like, people don't have to play their characters to the natural conclusion. So I don't want to just assume for him. I'll see if he gets back to me. We'll have a couple of minutes here. Has anybody got anything that they uh, want to ask whilst we see if he answers? What is the meaning of life? 42. What is the biggest star in the universe? The sun? I don't know. Me! I'm the biggest star in the universe. Is that the right answer? <laughs> You're the biggest star in the universe, honey. You're the staring star. I think David's going to get back to me. He's not even listed as online. This is such a weird choice. This is like the ultimate decision reflecting this campaign. I think if David doesn't answer me, I am going to release him. I don't want to make that choice. I don't want to take that choice away from David when he's not here. Like, if he captures us Shun Yu later on and chooses to execute him, that's up to him. But I, I don't want to steal David's moment of executing his rival who... Not only is his official rival by game mechanics, but is like, has been his rival since the start of the campaign. It just feels wrong to take that from him. I know. All right, he's not gonna answer, so we need to make a choice. Oh, I think I'm going to agree with Sarah that Song Chen as a character probably wouldn't release Shun Yu. So we will execute Shun Yu on Song Chen's orders. We have discovered the end of Shun Yu. Yuan Xu, or not Yuan Xu as we're calling him, and Yao Zhou are old swan. As is Song Chen and Yao Zhou. And Yao Zhou and Han Xin are now rivals. Because Han Xin's daughter, I think, was. Yeah, Han Lan was killed in the battle against this. Okay. Um, apparently, Song Chen's actually replenished his army entirely, so. We'll just push him towards the animal tamer. It's harvest. Jiang Wan is going to advance towards the livestock farm. Jung Jiang is still in ambush. She's probably been in ambush for a couple turns, actually. And I forgot to properly check on her. But she's going to take Wudu Silk Trader now. They are just melting away in front of us. This is like just a land grab. The captured scholar! One of the assets seized from the enemy appears to be a scholar. 
They can read, write, and have the unenviable ability to relentlessly assault your guards' ears with long, tedious odes to leaves. They are brought shortly before meeting with an unfortunate accident, no doubt. I, I, I want to hire them. I always hire them because it's a free officer, essentially. But, oh, hang up. Sarah's saying make them write. See, that feels to me like the worst option in terms of mechanics, because you get a temporary, like, two years where the enemy has three less morale. At least that one is a boost to your treasury. That one is a boost to Jung Jang's XP, which admittedly she doesn't need. And that one's an officer. I know it's not about the mechanics. But Jung Jang's not, like, arrogant or vain, so I don't see why she would care about making them right either. I guess she'd ransom them because she's greedy. I'm going to go with ransom them. I don't think she'd bother. Like, why would she want them to write about her? She doesn't care. She just wants to tear everything down. So, though the value of this scholar to their faction was mystifying to you, they fetched a high ransom, and you were glad for the peace. What's happened since you've been gone, Imotek? Um, Song, it turns out that Shun Yu joined Han Xin when he left our faction, and Song Chen just defeated him in battle, and then captured him and executed him. So we know the end of Shun Yu's story. It ended here. No, it ended up here. Sorry. In Shuo Fang Commandery, with his head rolling across the floor. Since you've been gone, I can't breathe for the first time. So moving on, yeah, yeah. Thanks to you, now I get, I get what I want. Since you've been gone. All right, we are going to do this. It's a close victory with medium casualties, but. It makes more sense than waiting another four turns. So we'll siege or assault the city rather. Uh, we will occupy. All of that was already on the list, so she didn't earn any new loot. Uh, oh yes, Tyler is going to wait and see if they attack him. Which I think means we're at the end of the turn. So let us proceed. Oh look, Song attacked. They outnumber us by 600 men. It's a open plains battle. They have a lot of missile units. They have trebs and a lot of cav and a shit ton of spears given that we've got five units of cavalry. But it's Tyler's call. What do we think, Tyler? Can I further upgrade my tea parlor, Imatech? Not right now, we're in the middle of a battle. Or, pr or deciding whether we're having a battle. What's the map look like? It's basically just a field. They have some trees on their side. You have some trees to your left. But by some trees, I really do mean some trees. Oh yeah, fuck that. What are we doing? Are we retreating? 
Uh, I'm not confident, to be honest. They've got a lot of missile units, which we don't have a lot of shields. We've got quite a few, but not a lot. We don't have a solid shield front line. They've got quite a bit of cav, because they've got four units, which could feck up our archers. Uh, they've got basically all of their infantry are spear infantry, which is going to make using your five cavalry a lot harder. Can't delegate cheese it if we're going to lose him, Attack. They outnumber us by 600, although the numbers aren't really what's important. The unit compositions are. And it would be an incredibly mobile battle for us to be able to do it properly. But I'm not confident in it. A lot of your frontline units... Okay, not a lot, but like three of your frontline Saber Militia are level 1. His cavalry are level 1 there. I, I, I'm not... Retreat. Yeah. Mazun. No peace. Tandu Wuye. No longer Emperor, Kingdom of Wei. This warlord has lost their imperial palace and rallies against the perception that they are no longer Emperor, claiming the other claimants are imposters. Oh, and Wu has confederated Wei, which means Wu now holds all three imperial capitals. And is fucking huge. They always do that. Why did Wei give up? They were... Uh, Alright, Yin Li has gained the philanthropic trait, as has Tao Jin Jin, and Sarah Song Jian has gained the understanding trait. He's just becoming a rape boo. Mo no peace for you, mother flopper. Has any of my requests gone through, and has my retinue swapped out to one Saber Infantry for Saber Cav? Uh, no, because you, you were still in enemy territory until this last turn. And no, because your other request was for any expertise item, which you haven't had any of. Whoa, there's a lot of people in the recruitment pool. Trade has been suspended with the Kingdom of Wei. I feel like suspended is probably the wrong word. Okay. An Ping has built a Confucian Shrine. It's public order, it's stable, so we're not going to build anything else there. Herne has built a Grand Treasury Mint. Um, that mostly boosts commerce income, which we do get some from the trading port. So I guess... We'll upgrade it to artisan workshops. Tai Yuen has built, or yes, has built craftsman shafts, but it's also demolished its stuff. So we will get a blacksmith in Tai Yuen. There's your military forges, honey. Whizbank, hi, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? How is your Monday going? Um, farm labourer camp over in Zhongshan. Tyler, your farm labourer camp can be upgraded again. If you choose to do so, you have a choice between the workforce distribution office, which is 50% food production boost and 50% peasantry income boost, or the farm supply storage, which is 75% food production boost and 25% income from peasantry boost. Whizbank, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the doghouse. You feel better now? Were you feeling bad before? I'm glad you feel better. 
I'm having a great day, yeah. I always have good days when we get to do our Jung Jung roleplay campaigns. Tyler, are you alive? Do you use any mode? Mm, what do you mean? Confused. Dot com. It sounds to me like Tyler has disappeared. So... Oh, mods. Uh, no, I am playing completely vanilla. Um... We've already done that. And then Imotech, you wanted to look at your tea parlor in she her. It can indeed be upgraded to a tea house if you wish. From a parlor of tea to a house of tea. Not yet a grand house of tea, but a normal house of tea. Do you want to do that? Yes, I wish so. So Jing Pei has ordered that she her gets a tea house. Which, yeah, there's not really anybody between him and there. So that's going to go through. All right. Our building choices have gone through. Song Qian is going to move closer to this army. Guang Chiu Dian. Nice name, dude. Jiang Wan is going to attack on Ding Livestock Farm. We will do it as a night battle, even though I'm not sure that will make a massive difference. Tyler's ah! back! Your mom is in the OAP army. There isn't an OAP army anymore. Had to get an aspirin, no worries, Tyler. Your notoriety increases, Bandit Queen! A new empress for a new empire. Let none doubt your brilliance or your power. You have stood atop the bodies of everyone who has opposed you, yet still some remain. Cut them apart. Let none deny you the right you have claimed. So we have climbed as high as it's possible to climb without having an imperial capital. We are now the Bandit Queen. Has her her died, Imotech? We, we don't know, because he's in the other faction. So he's just, he could have wandered off. Honestly, I'm stumped because they have a really good counter to anything we have in that army, unless we can try an ambush. You can try an ambush. For sure. But I was more wanting your opinion, because Zhongshan has upgraded its, it's got its farm labourer camp. So you have the option now of upgrading to a workforce distribution office, which is 50% food production and 50% peasantry income, or a farm supply storage, which is 75% food production and 25% in peasantry income. Or you could upgrade your town, or you don't have to upgrade anything. It's up to you, but the 50% one. Workforce distribution office. Done. Oh, shit. We're now known as the Thai Dominion. I didn't know that happened. I guess it makes sense because they go from the Duchy of Shuhan to the Kingdom of Shuhan. And we've gone from the Thai Brotherhood to the Thai Dominion. God, we're like the flicking Klingons or something. The Thai Dominion. Kapla. Okay. Uh, Jung Jung. It's autumn, so I don't want to be pushing across any borders as things are. Oh, good. The yellow turbans are here. <laughs> Jung Jung's going to move up to the border and she'll drop into ambush just for good measure. Also, you know what would make for a really good game, and I'm surprised they haven't done it? Stargate game that's like XCOM. It's probably just to do with copyrights and stuff and property rights for Stargate. It would be amazing. A Star Stargate mods for XCOM would be shit hot. Like, why that's not been done is beyond me, but... 
I definitely play that. Right, Han on Yue is gonna destroy Gao Jun's army because it's in the way. Stargate on Mod Wen. I, know, right? I love Stargate, man. Five percent replenishment. Yes, please. Move back into the settlement. Zhang Shu, Zhang Lan Wen, and Gao Jun all killed in battle against us. We've already seen that. We've done that. Right. I think the only army that hasn't done anything is Zhu Jun's, Tyler. Um, you could try setting an ambush and seeing if the enemy army walks into it, because without the garrison backing the army, you would probably win. And without the army backing the garrison, you would probably win. But with them both together, you won't win. <laughs> so, getting them separated is probably the way to win. Ambush sounds good. Do you want to do it here or somewhere else? It's up to you. We've got about 10 minutes left in the stream, guys. Hopefully we can get to the end of the spring turn. I mean, they might head north, but if you, like, tried to go around there, they might just as easily head west. Their movement, they cannot reach Bohai Fishing Port in one move. So if they did move north, they'd get stuck up there. Then you could either sweep in behind them and cut them off or take the salt mine, let them have the fishing port and chase them up. It's up, it's up to you, but... Move to the trees? It could move to the trees. It gives you an extra 25% of a successful ambush. But... I mean, yeah, he could move to those trees and... But... It's really... It's up to Tyler. It depends what he wants to do. Yeah, fuck it. Those trees are going to speak Chinese. I don't know what the hell that means. <laughs> We're going to move up there and drop into ambush, Tyler. Your zone of control covers the road pretty nicely, so... Yeah. All right. That's all we're going to be able to do for the autumn turn. So we'll move to winter. Oh, they tried to march out. They got caught. Ambush succeeded. And at a delegate would be a win. What do you want to do, Tyler? We might get absolutely shrecked on a delegate. If you mean you might take a lot of casualties, then yeah, you might be right. It says medium, which is not quite high, but yeah. But you would win. And they don't have an army. I'm pretty sure this army will be destroyed if it loses in an ambush. So then you would just need to take a couple turns to replenish and then attack the garrison. I mean, it's not my judgment, it's your judgment. What I'm saying is, this is not particularly strong either way, and typically this thing knows what it's talking about. Plus, we've already gone over, like, they've got a lot of cav, they've got a lot of spears, they've got trebs. The trebs mean we can't be standoffish, because if the trebs are shooting at us, we kind of have to attack. They've got plenty of ranged, and we have minimal shields, which means they're going to do a lot of damage. They have a lot of cav, which means what range we do have. They can always try and flank, which ties up a lot of our cav and means we can't do much. And then most of their infantry is made up of spears. So even if we can get the cav free and charge them, there's still a lot of potential for the spears to do massive damage to the cav. Delegate cheese! Delegate cheese! Delegate because it's been three hours. It has, but... There's also the 10 minutes of intro time, so we've still got about 5 minutes left. We will delegate the battle, though. In 
for me. We've captured Wang Bao Lan. She's 59. She's the administrator of Bei Hai. She's dutiful, distinguished, indecisive, bright, tranquil, and scarred. She wouldn't join us. But it's Tyler's call because it's his army. Apparently she's friends with Wei Dan, who I think is in our faction. Uh, Lady Feng and Yuan Feng Jie. Wizbank says execute. Wizbank, come back on Wednesday and sponsor an officer, man, and like maybe you'll end up as a general and it'll be your call. Tyler says release, he's the general. That's what's gonna happen. Uh, why have I clicked a button and oh shit. Hmm. Alright, hold on guys. I'm going to try and get the load back up as soon as possible. We we should be able to, because that was on the end turn sequence, just make the same decisions that were already decided. Nope. Oh, have you got an officer? No, yeah. It, Wizbank's only just followed. Uh, if he's been in the stream before, I didn't know about it. So, yeah, whilst we're loading in, Wizbank, we are doing a sponsored officer roleplay campaign where you can sponsor an officer in the game, a lot like adopting an animal at the zoo, where you get to pick their traits and um, choose kind of what they want to do. Uh, if you become a general, you choose where your army goes. Uh, you, you get to exercise your influence, try and build buildings, become administrators, you know, climb your way through the ranks. So a lot of people in the chat right now have got sponsored officers that they control. Right, it should have auto-saved as I clicked the end turn button, so I'm just going to click it again. She's going to move again. We're going to ambush her again. We're going to delegate again. We get the money. We apparently gained an ancillary this time. We're going to take the replenishment. We didn't capture her this time, but it doesn't really matter. Marzoon is going to move in on that. We might be able to defend that if I wanted to, but given it's the end of the stream, I'm just going to let them have it and take it back later on. He's going to run away, which is fine. No worries, Wizbank. Hopefully we'll still be here when you come back. Uh, we know about that. Alright. Uh, the Tai Yuan. Can you not build? Oh, we need provincial military forges before we can upgrade that again. Which is there. Okay. We will upgrade to craftsman workshops then, since it only takes a turn. Yin Lee will see to that. Uh, Tyler, your workforce distribution office has been built. The only thing Zhongshan could do if it wanted to now is upgrade its settlement administration we gained Wei Liao Zhu which was actually gained in Tyler's victory so Tyler if you want you can claim the Wei Liao Zhu It's yours to claim or yours to pass on to somebody else if you want to pass it on to somebody else. The Wei Liao Zhu. War does not concern itself with battle alone. The council chamber can be just as much the battlefield and words its weapons. 
So if you want to have it for yourself, you can, or you can gift it to somebody else. Or, if you don't do anything with it this turn, it'll just go into the faction loot pool and you lose claim to it. What's already equipped? In that slot, you have a Jade Monkey which you would lose but if you want to give the jade monkey to somebody else we can also do that I'm, we might need to write it down because i don't know if we'll be ending this turn and it'll take one turn for the monkey to go back into the pool to come back out you're going to take whaley alzer cool do you want to do anything with the jade monkey do you want to give that to anyone or let that return to the faction pool Whoever needed cunning can take it. That's cheating and is not allowed. Those two people are dead. We know about that. Right. I personally think we can wrap up the winter turn and then finish the spring turn. And that will be the end of the stream. We need to wrap up the wind turn anyway, so Song Chen is going to seize this settlement. The animal tamer. Oh, like the wind. Not satisfied with winning the battle, our general overtakes the retreating enemy troops and lays a successful ambush further reducing the numbers that can stand against us. Bonus experience for Tsong Chen. I think we're going to have Jiang Wan head towards Shuofang salt mine. Uh, the bandit queen is down here. She's gonna... Oh, it's winter, no. Eh, we'll keep her in ambush until spring. Han An Yue is gonna return to Shangyong for the winter. Oh, her her is indeed down at Shangyong Lumberyard, so he's still alive. Tyler! Your army is very slightly damaged, but... Uh, is there anything you want to do with it for the winter? Imotech, you're down with um, Han An Yue's army in Shandong. Is it Shandong? Shangyong, sorry. So you guys have got the city, but you've now been cut off from the route home by her her. He obviously thinks it's very funny. Request for Saber Cav to replace Saber Infantry. Which one? The level 3 or the level 10? And Tyler, I need to know if your army is going to commit to its orders or not. Or rather, I need to know what its orders are or whether it's staying still. The level 3. So, because Han An Yue is trusting, she's going to trust her lieutenant that he needs it. Oh, you can't have Saber Cav. You do know that, right? Like, you can have mounted Saber Militia, but you can't have Saber Cav because they are a uh, commander unit and you're a sentinel. So the best you can get is Mounted Saber Militia, which is the bottom rung of the ladder.
Is that what you meant? Or did you mean actual Saber Cav that you've been pushing for the reform to unlock? Because I don't know. I'll take the militia. We need something fast. Okay. That's that done. And Tyler, are we moving you or have you pissed off again? I think Tyler's gone. And given that we are already five minutes overdue, I don't think we are going to push to the spring. So we'll leave Tyler where he is. Quick overview. Uh, at the end of the last stream, we owned all of this over the other side of the river and uh, Chang'an here and here. We've now grabbed this and this and a whole lot of this. I don't think Han Xin is able to muster any resistance against Song Chen and Zhang Wan, so that conquest is just going to continue. Ma Zun isn't looking like he's got much resistance in him. Lang Juan Yen's not looking like she's got much in her tank either. But once we've finished absorbing them, which is probably going to take most of next episode on day 13... First of all, we've got the problem with Song, but uh, we can probably deal with that. But then beyond that, I think we've got Feng Xiu, Pei, Shu Han, and Wu. And that's basically it. Han is that the Han are our vassal. Yu Ming Xiang's in there as well, but she's only got two settlements. Which pretty much means, at some point, day 14 or day 15, so a couple of episodes from now, we're going to be looking at a big war probably with Shu Han and Wu because they're Shu Han is Wu's vassal unless we can turn Shu Han against Wu oh Tyler's back retake the salt okay we'll do that just before we end the stream it's a little casualty decisive victory anyway and it's the end of the stream so I'm not even going to ask we're just going to delegate not a lot of monies. Free informate. Uh, what do you want to do with the settlement, Tyler? Occupy, loot and occupy, or sack and withdraw. I think Tyler's disappeared again. Alright, it's already 10 minutes over the end of the stream so I'm just going to choose Occupy. Alright. We've retaken Ping Yuan's salt mine. Uh, Song Yang has leveled up. But you know what? We'll do that at the start of day 13. When we will be cleaning up our northwestern campaigns and probably gaining a quite a lot of ground we'll probably attack the yellow turbans as well and take those two settlements and then we're going to be looking at a huge war question is how huge will it be i don't know uh let me just have a quick look see if there's anybody we can raid guys uh there is so we'll do one um we're going to be raiding the Rebel King. He's playing a bit of Total War Rome 2 online battles right now. 
if you do stick around for the raid please do stick it around in his channel for a little bit guys because uh we'll probably be <sighs> i don't know how the fraction works he's got eight we've got five people so if we all go we're going to triple his audience basically will be a third of his new audience there we go that's what i mean um i'll be back in two days time for more war men more war men's day more war wednesday with uh day 13 of our uh total war campaign looking forward to it guys make sure you make some noise for rebel king when we go over there guys thank you very much i really do appreciate it 250 followers tonight you guys fucking rule i am so stoked and I'm looking forward to day 13. Thank you guys so much. For the time being, it's going to be Wardog out.